everyone. Welcome to my home on the hillside here in Wales. How lovely of you to pop in. Today I'm going to be making a few lovely little crafts that are very spring orientated, but you could also use them for summer or any time of year really. And on my first project, these are the materials I'm going to be using. So let's have a look. So I've got some burlap, a strip of burlap here that I cut off the edge of some fabric that I have. I've got these stickers. I got these from the pound shop. So I'm pretty sure you can get these from Dollar Tree too. And I'm going to be using the herbs word. And I've got this piece of, it's a double-sided paper, which always frustrates me that I have to sacrifice one side to use the other. But I'm going to be using a piece of that. I'm going to be using some string. Pretty piece of green fabric. You're going to have to use your imagination. I was going to put fresh herbs in, but my garden still hasn't sprung to life yet. And the herbs that are there are looking pretty grim. So we're going to pretend that this is a purple thyme. Yes, it does look like purple thyme with your eyes closed. But we'll make do with that. And I've got these, which we're going to pretend are chives. <laughs> they do look a bit like chives. And this is a, like a lamb's ear, but we're going to pretend this is sage. So there we go, some practice for your imagination today. And I'm going to use this, as you can see, it cost me one pound. It's got three lovely little bottles in it. But I just think it looks, it, it's not boring, but it needs a little bit of something, a little bit of oomph to brighten it up. So I'm going to oomphify it. Is that a word? Probably not. So I'm going to turn this upside down. And it's going to be a little bit difficult to do. And I'm going to use my pencil through here and try drawing around this and then I'll cut it a millimetre shorter or smaller. There we are and I'm not worried at all about there being slight discrepancy there because that is where we will be using some twine. Marvellous stuff twine. So now I just want to glue this onto here and I'm going to use hot glue because I don't think that any other glue is really going to do the job well enough. Now this is something I struggle with, is getting a thin enough bead of hot glue. Just on the edge there. Now I want to go around again, but I'm not sure if this word herbs is going to fit on. Let's take those off, more chance of me getting it straight. Remember when you're making anything like this, don't panic. If it goes wrong, you can probably cover it up. And if you can't, well, just hope your friend's too polite to mention anything. <laughs> right, mm, do I go at a jaunty angle? I think I will. I like that. Oh, shame I couldn't go right down there and cover that. Shall I go around the inside again? I think I will, because I think it just gives it a little bit more of a quality look when you put a thicker embellishment on. Fine embellishment has its place, but when you're doing something rustic or farmhouse, I think, for me, I like to really go for it. So now to cover this little bit of scruffiness here, I'm going to glue on this burlap bowl. Won't need a lot of glue. And then the little twine bowl. Now the next thing I want to do is to add some fabric roses. Now I've been trying to learn roses. It's very, it's fiddly and I'm not good with fiddly things. But I'll show you how I make them. But this isn't probably the ideal way to make them. So I just get myself a piece of fabric. Cut it about really roughly. Three inches. Two to three inches. Tear it. Now you do have the option to fray these edges. And I do like a little bit of fraying on the edges. So it takes a bit of time. It's not too difficult. But it is a little bit time consuming. So I just fold down a triangle there. Little blob of glue in there just to hold it together. Then roll the bottom one way and the top the other way. You're just making a blob for the centre for the bud really. And then a little blob of glue in there and it'll probably unroll while you're doing that. Re-roll it. Put it there and try to hide some of the hot glue. Now I take a little bit of glue, put it up there like that twist this round and bring it up to the top and then it's just a case of there are ways of making beautiful little petals and things like that but I don't want anything like that when I'm trying to keep this rustic 
and two I can't do it anyway not just yet I am trying and I almost got there with one and then I just couldn't get the hang of it again it's very difficult to do and again not difficult fiddly you need to practice a lot I probably made about 20 of these roses now and I'm still <laughs> trying to get the hang of it one thing I have learned is don't do like I did there. Try not to put too much hot glue on because it spills out the bottom and burns your fingers. And then you just keep twisting your fabric and gluing, twisting and gluing, and carry on until you've got a rose or a rosebud the size you want. So when you think your bed is big enough, and I only want small ones for this. I have made much bigger ones than these and they're really pretty. You then cut off the end. Push that down to the bottom and when you turn it over you've got a tail sticking out that's not a problem take your scissors and snip it out now at this point i usually end up pushing the rosebud out a little bit because it tends to sink in the way i do them so now put your roses on where you think they look good but don't glue them yet mm, that's a deeper one so i can put that one there hanging over and only start gluing them when you're happy because it's amazing how much difference it makes just playing about with these and getting them in just the right place. Now you do have the option to put some foliage in these but I'm not going to, I think I want to keep it simple. And now wrap the handle with some jute twine. Now I think that really lifts it already, it looks wonderful. So now what we need to do is decorate the glass jars. This is going to be fun, quick, easy and very effective. I'm going to give them a quick wipe over because it's surprising how dusty these were waiting in the shop and then waiting in my cupboard shouting pick me pick me every time I look for a project and they didn't get picked so now they have been picked they're very dusty now I'm just going to tie a little bit of this around the top and tie it in a bow the same with the other two. One thing I love about working with burlap and with jute twine is that you haven't got to worry about perfection because they're not supposed to be perfect it's just the same as old sacking and I think that looks lovely and if anything like there's a little piece missing here when they made it but I don't think that takes away from the charm at all I think it adds to it. So now we'll pop them into our little herb container And all that's left to do is to add the herbs. Now this is certainly going to last long enough for my garden to spring back into life and put some fresh herbs in there and now we decide do we want to go for the tall ones in the middle i think i probably will i do love a bit of uniformity that feels more yes i think that's better well i absolutely love that adding a few embellishments really does make a difference too putting the string around here just makes it look really high end instead of some cheap thing you bought and this around here i love too so let's have a look what this looks like on my display. For my next project, as you can see, there is quite a lot of foliage. I won't be using all this, but I will be using an assortment from each plant. I got a printable Savon a la Violette. So I printed this out, we're going to use that. A little piece of cardboard that looks like a piece of metal some burlap and a wooden serving platter that i got from b m bargains so the first thing to do is to open this up There's a tie on the top, which I may or may not use. I don't think I, I'd like to replace it with a ribbon. So it's probably going anyway. And I don't want it covered in paint. So we'll get rid of that. And now I'm going to use some of my well solidified gloopy chalk paint, some water. Just 
you would do it. Get a wet wipe at the ready. And now I'm going to paint on. Now this is bamboo. And it's a nice enough colour, but I just want to put some sort of thin white wash on it. I do love a thin white wash. I think it looks lovely. And it's so easy to do. Yes. Paint it on and lightly wipe it off. What about you? Would you have put the white wash on this or would you have left it the colour it was? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And now we need to let that dry so it doesn't take long at all. So I've got this printable. I'm going to turn it over. Now I did this method before and I didn't like it, but I'm going to try again. I'm going to persevere to try and make this paper a little bit thinner. Just lay on your parcel tape. Then carefully, ever so carefully, tear it off. Now I'm going to cut it out. So I'm just going to add a little bit of this brown acrylic around the outside, around the edges, like this. Just try and create a bit of age. So now I'm going to add fresh flowers to this piece of metal. Now we take our piece of hessian and trim the edges nice and straight. So now, after doing all that prep work, this is nice and dry, we're going to get out our printable and stick it about there. So we get out some Mod Podge. You don't need to overdo it. And then... Pop it in place. And I like to give it a run over with my bone folder. And now I'm going to coat right over this printable and over the board. Because otherwise you'll see a stark edge where the Mod Podge stops. So by putting it all over, it will dry clear, but you'll get the same texture over all the bits you can see. Now, if you're going to be using burlap like I am, you have to be very careful with the order you do things in now, because if I put this in place and then glue things on, the glue is going to go straight through the burlap and then the burlap will be firmly fixed to the back and we don't want that. So I'm just going to work out where exactly I want my little sign to come. Now, this is going to be wrapped right the way around and joined at the back. We don't need that much overlap, so I'm going to take some off. We don't want to waste fabric we don't need to use. And we know where our centre line is, so this is going to be glued on about there. And then I'm going to take these frayed edges off and then trim that again. I want to have some space for the flowers to fit in, but I don't want too much space. So I wanted to have a bit of sag, but not a lot. So I'm going to use my paint tub. Pop it in there. And then wrap the burlap around. And then glue it to the back. Now, a bit like wrapping a Christmas present. I'm just going to tuck the bottom in at the corners like that one two and then glue it up like that so now to give this a little bit of sacking the appearance of fullness i'm going to stuff it with a little bit of fiber fill and now it's time to add the florals So now we need a hanger, I'm going to use this gingham ribbon. Thread it 
next we put the ends through the loop that forms so it's nice and taut and then tie a knot at the top but I think we need a bow I love an excuse to put a bow on any excuse so I've altered the shape and the size and the position of the bows and I've decided on putting this one at the back there and then putting this one on top there so now it's just out with the hot glue So I think that looks absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. So now let's have a look, see what it looks like up on my display. These are the materials for my last project of the day. So I've got my paint. And here we've got Kenwood Cream, Aileen's Tacky Glue. We've got a birdhouse I got from the charity shop for 70p. My drawer full of butterflies in various styles and materials and sizes. I got some lovely spring branches. Two pieces of 12 by 12 paper. I don't think you need 12 by 12 for this, but the ones I like just happen to be 12 by 12. So it's a lovely green botanical. And look at that beautiful bark there. And finally, we've got a frame. And I've got this frame. Now, this frame's got a few little dings on it. I've had to glue all the joints back together. It had had a very hard life. But I'm not going to put the backing back in this. If I turn it over, you can see we've got these little things in here that need pulling out. I'm going to make a white chalk wash just by adding a bit of water my chalk paint now we give this a run over with the white and then wipe it off with the wet wipe now i think one problem we have is that this is varnished so it's not going to soak in as much as usual but i think it'll still be plenty for the sort of effect that i want So while that's drying, we'll get to work on our little bird's house. So let's open up our new tin of paint. Oh, that's a lovely rich colour. Now we next need to stir it. Now I am going to be gluing things onto the roof of the birdhouse and to the front of the birdhouse, but I want to paint the sides and the bottom. But before we do, let's take this hanger off because we don't need that now, because it's not going to be hanging up. Oh, I love using a new colour for the first time. Let's have a look. Oh yes, look at that. Mmm. changed my mind and gave it a bit of a rub down. I am prone to change my mind quite often through a project. Well, it's not a rub down, it's just a wipe down with a wet wipe just before it's dry. So the frame I've measured, the aperture is 11 and a half by 8 so I'm going to put this away and get some wire but I'm going to cut it bigger than that because it's going on to the back so we'll actually make it about 12 and a half by 9. I think I forgot to show you this at the beginning. Phew. It's been a long day. So I got this wire netting. I got it from the pound shop, but it was two pounds. Oh, I've got some free wire. I do love getting free art supplies. Or oh, if you're doing this at home, be very careful. This is very pingy. And it could have your eyes or your skin. Mm, so that was very precarious. Now this isn't chicken wire. And I had been thinking of getting chicken wire, but when I saw this, I thought, ooh, this looks more expensive. If you're looking for a high-end effect on some of your art, then this, I think, will be perfect. I've got my reading glasses on, so I feel a little bit safer with my eyes, but 
ideally i really should recommend that you wear eye protection and safety gloves because this is quite sharp on the edges but it was a lot easier to cut this than it was to originally open that roll that roll was lethal now i'm going to use my new staple gun turn that on for my light and turn that on for the power but you can do this with a hand stapler you just got to open it up I can never quite get the hang of it. I don't seem to be able to get the oomph. If not, you could put little tacks into these, these little U-shaped nails, and that will hold it still too. <coughs> I'm going to put some paper on the front of the bird's house. with the tacky glue and then on with the paper now this is a bit fiddly and you may find you do this and it doesn't work well you can always take it off and try again with another piece of paper or you can just think well it doesn't got to be absolutely perfect it's more important for you to enjoy doing this than it is for you to get it 100% perfect and as you can see mine certainly isn't 100% perfect now I was going to sand down these edges, but I think I'll glue them on instead. I think it does look nice just going around the corner a little bit. Had I thought of that sooner, I may have gone a little bit further around the corner, but this is what we've got, so this is what we'll work with. Right, now somewhere in the middle of there is a hole, so I'm going to get my X-Acto knife. And you can feel roughly where it is, so... There we go, now we need to put the roof on. And now we're just going to glue this paper to the roof of the birdhouse. You can use PVA glue, but the problem with PVA glue is it can be quite wet and then it makes everything bubble. So I think you have more chance of it not bubbling with the tacky glue. So on with the roof. Now, isn't that looking lovely? I'm going to stuff some tissue paper inside to raise the bottom. Then I'm going to get my moss. This is reindeer moss. And I'm going to pop some in here, just looking like there's a bit of a nest in there. So now I'll put a little bit of glue inside and pop the reindeer moss in. So I'm going to be using more moss, hot glue. And pop the moss on it. Oh, doesn't that look pretty? Oh yes, look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous. I love it already. So now we bring our frame back and I'm going to bring in my spring branches. So let's attach this piece first. Moss everywhere. And poke that down into the corner. And now before I attach the other branch, I'm going to fix this in place, this birdhouse. Now, in the ideal world, I would have wired it, but I don't really sure how I'm going to get my fingers in there to sort out wiring. So I've decided that I'm going to go with these giant lollipop sticks. So that's where I want it to be. So now I'm going to put lots of hot glue up here, pop the lollipop stick on there and that little bit there. More hot glue on the end of this. Now you can just keep these within the confines of the frame, but I like them all bursting over. I like this big butterfly, but I don't know whether he's really going to go with this or not. I could put him there, flying through the air. I 
put him on the birdhouse, but I don't think that's going to work. I've got this one here. Now look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Somebody sent me this. Mm, I don't know. It's always difficult to make these final decisions with embellishments. So while I'm thinking what to do with that, I'm going to add a little bit more in the line of greenery. I'm going to put them around the bottom of the birdhouse, burying them underneath the moss. Now I always like to think, finish things off with a bow. You know me and my bow tying. So I'm going to make a two loop bow. Just a nice little simple one with this jute twine. I don't want anything excessively frilly. As much as I am tempted because I do like excessively frilly. I want this to have that simple look to it. Like that. And I think I'm also going to run a line of jute around this as well. I think that's really going to finish it off nicely. So I've decided to add a little bit of a shabby chic type embellishment and I've got this here, it's been stamped, this was sent to me by somebody and they've just stamped a bit of fabric but doesn't it look wonderful? I'm just going to trim that off a bit I'm going to cover this piece of wood with some of this paper so now I'm going to hot glue this onto this little sign or I suppose this is the sign onto the plank over to the one side like that and then we've got this little tiny bit of tree left so I'm going to put that in there doesn't that look cute and now I'm going to glue the butterfly on but just something that I've learned from my art and it's worth bearing in mind if I put the butterfly that way then he's flying out of the picture and so it'll take your eye out of the picture and away but if you bring him this way, then when your eye goes up here, meets the butterfly, it'll send your eye back down to the picture again. So you can put it up on there to get the full extent of the picture, or we can put him down on there. I prefer him down on there. So we just a little bit of hot glue on there. And pop him on, leading everybody back in to look at the pretty birdhouse. Now you could put a hanger on this. I don't want a hanger on this. I want this to be leaning against a wall, but that's completely up to you. If you do, then you can just attach some string or a picture hanger on the back and you'll be ready to go. So let's have a look what this looks like on my display. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, it would be great if you could give me a like because that shows me that you're enjoying the content I put out and it also helps me on YouTube because YouTube thinks, oh, somebody likes what she's doing. I'll see you all next time, but until then, don't forget, have fun. Bye.